Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. And today we're doing something a little bit different because I have a confession to make. You've all been asking about this top that you saw me wearing here at my desk and also maybe spotted in the Synapse lookbook in the mustard yellow version or kind of an ochre color version. Now this, this top, I also very much, well, I really like it as well, but it is from Amazon, which it's not the best. It's basically fast fashion by any other name as it were and uh, it's cheap enough to prove it, and uh, it's just, well, I don't want to link you to this top so you can buy it. Although I have found a, an extremely similar simplicity pattern, so if you don't want to do the pattern drafting I'll be doing today, I'll link to the simplicity pattern below, and then you can just make one yourself using their pattern if you want. Go ahead and make that two sizes smaller than they say they should if you actually want it to fit. But I entirely digress. Basically, I bought this shirt because I really liked the look of it, and I wanted to knock it off. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'll be taking that knit pattern that we were working with, recently showing you how to transform it into this shirt so that you don't have to buy one you can go ahead and make one yourself let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and copy this design so once again we begin with that uh, stretch block that i made recently and i will link up to that i've done a tracing of that and again i'm going to nip in the, <clears throat> the sides of that just a little bit and then bring out the shoulders just a little bit because i'm slowly trying to perfect that pattern uh, as we go along here basically just because still have tiny little adjustments to make. Every time I make it, I notice something else I want to try. So here is a sleeveless version of this exact top, again, from the same seller on Amazon, just so we can get a look at where all this gathering is concentrated and how they have finished the neckline. So the neck is just extended upwards and then it's like self-faced basically. So the turtleneck of it all folds down inside, gets tacked down, and that's how the neckline is finished. And you can see all the gathering here is contained on the side between the waist and the underarm. And then the rest of gathering is up into the shoulder. So I'll show you exactly what weird funky shape of pattern we need to achieve this sort of gathered look. And the first thing I'm going to do here is just extend the neckline of this up into a turtleneck. Um, you know, this isn't how we add a collar when we're working with wovens, but when it comes to stretch, you really can just, just draw on whatever shape you want a lot of the time. So uh, I just drew on the kind of turtleneck extension for that. I made it about two inches tall because it's going to fold down in on itself. You'll see that when we get to the sewing. And then I'm drawing in some lines here that we're going to open up and add fullness to. So we're going to add all that gathering in basically to the otherwise fitted top. So I'm going to cut this out and then I will start cutting these lines apart and we'll add in a bunch of fullness to this garment. It's just adding and gathering wherever you want it, really. Uh, this is this is a lot simpler than you would think. Uh, this is, involves no draping. You're just adding gathering in where you want it. So I'm going to split this buddy apart here. Now, instead of adding a wedge of fullness, I'm going to add in a full three inches of fullness all along this corridor, all along this angled line from the shoulder to the under arm sort of side seam area. And you'll see I start by adding four inches in, but I will reduce this down to three inches in a minute just because I'm going to do three slashes up into the shoulder between the uh, side seam and up into the shoulder like this. And for all three of them, I'm going to add three inches in for a total of nine inches total of extra fullness being added in here. Um, I think the first time I did this for the red top that you saw in, in Synapse, part of the problem there was that I did not add in enough fullness. Um, it's also just a little bit big in the side because that pattern wasn't perfectly fitted to me in general, the starting pattern, but I just, you know, went a little, uh, instead of going heavy handed, I went a little too easy on how much fullness I added in and I didn't add in enough to really get the gathered effect that I was after. Also, it was a very floopy fabric, but I digress. Um, so I didn't go hard enough. So today we're going a full extra nine inches between the shoulder and the side seam here to really, I, I was trying three inches almost to be like, okay, how can I go too far? You know, can we have to dial it back? So I'm going to start with nine inches up here and you'll see what that looks like basically. So all three lines from the shoulder down into the side seam are getting three inches of extra fullness added. I'm just kind of lining those up as best I can on an angle. Um, of course, this is distorting everything, but I'll just smooth off these areas. I'm grabbing a big Sharpie to do that. Just smoothing that off here. I needed to see a little bit more paper um, to be able to see what I needed to do here. And in the end, uh, I could have scooped these lines out a little bit more. Again, I was being kind of conservative. I will be making a mock-up today so you can see where this initial pattern drafting lands me. I'll just cut off the excess there. So you can see we've just taken the top of this pattern and kind of weirdly distorted it up at an angle. And then the only other bit is here, I'm adding a bit of additional fullness with a wedge of fullness from this side, the larger extended side of the waist into the other side of the waist of the underarm area, kind of slightly angled upwards from the waist to the underarm of the other side, just to really cement the amount of gathering going on on this one side of the top. So, you know, the opposite shoulder and waist gathers 
um, are kind of like giving this asymmetric effect that we're after today. So all this is going to be gathered down. It's going to be gathered down to the same measurement of the other side, which is eight inches. This shoulder is about four inches. So all this shoulder gathering needs to be gathered down to four inches. Again, this is not super, super difficult. Uh, this is actually rather a quick modification. Uh, you might take a couple of tries to get it perfectly to your liking, depending on what types of fabric you're using and stuff like that. But in general, not difficult. Now, of course, I need to trace a copy of my back pattern, and then just all I need to do here is modify the neck so that the neck still matches up. So I'm just going to trace on my little mock neck that I added to the front, like all-in-one mock neck, as opposed to an all-in-one sleeve. This is an all-in-one collar. But once again, I'm going to cut this out of our handy-dandy spiderweb jersey and give it a try. And here's what this looks like, this first pattern, this first try here. I didn't bother showing you how I sewed this because I'll show you in a minute. But um, the neck actually here is too tight. Um, so it's actually better if I turn the lighting down almost. The rest of the shirt is a little bit big, so I'm going to take some of the width out of the side of this. Honestly, I could take even more. I needed to take a good at least inch out of the width of this because we're adding in so much extra gathering along the front that there's plenty of room for the body to move around in here that I could have removed more uh, from this area because there's plenty of floop in here. But the neckline is actually too small and a little bit hard to get over my head here. So I'm going to modify those two things. So firstly, I'm going to add a half inch on to either side of the neck, like so. So adding a full inch to the neckline there, including uh, an inch on the back too, because I'll add that same half inch along the neckline of the back. And then I'm going to remove half an inch along the side. Again, I think I could have removed half an inch along both sides, if not a full inch on this larger side to really cinch this in more. As we are learning from making these stretch, me making these stretch videos, I like things to be quite skin tight. Uh, even when I'm working with wovens, people always ask me about adding ease. I don't know about a lot about adding ease because I try and make things fit as closely as possible. Comfort is actually not my main concern in life. Um, I'm one of those, you know, will suffer for fashion people. So uh, you can always add more ease and leave more ease in your patterns if you want to. It's just not usually my jam as we know. And a lot of people use a rotary cutter and a cutting mat and pattern weights to cut out knits or to cut out anything, honestly, but I'm still sticking with my scissors just because that's what I have. That's what I'm used to. So just cutting everything out here. This could use a nice little press first. This is a really lightweight rayon jersey from Joann's, but I just loved this deep berry color. So we're going to be going with this uh, sort of cerise or berry color today of jersey. And this again is a very floopy, very flowy fabric, which feels like some sort of non-Newtonian liquid solid to try and sew with and is not the most fun ever. Uh, but it's worth it because it's very soft and nice to wear but it is not very fun to sew with, that's for sure. Just giving that a little bit of a steam, a little bit of a press over here as best I can. It's almost one of those things that like, if you are not ironing carefully, you're putting more wrinkles in than you're taking out. In general, as a finished garment, I would steam this as opposed to iron it. But the first step for this top is that I'm going to put in two lines of gathering stitching along the gathered shoulder area and the large um, side of the waist area, the corresponding opposite angled areas across the front of this top. So I'm putting two lines of gathering stitching. That's just the largest stitch length with my uh, regular straight stitch over here on the B35. Um, just putting those two lines of gathering stitching right next to each other about a quarter of an inch in from the edge, I suppose. I'll tie off my gathering threads on one side and then pull those top threads to gather this all down. Again, I'm gathering all of this down, which is about maybe 12 or 13 inches of fullness down into the original so shoulder seam measurement, which is around four inches. So I'll gather all this down and I will match it up with the corresponding shoulder of the back, like so. Although this fabric is kind of hard to tell what the front and the back is. It was a very subtle difference in fuzziness level almost. So I feel like even if I messed it up, you would never know. But, you know, most fabrics, uh, if they have a print on them or some sort of effect going on, you can tell what side is right and wrong. But with this, it was a little bit samesy. But I'll just pin all that gathering making sure everything is sized down. Um, of course, this is too much gathering to be doing it the way I did earlier in the week. Um, this is, you know, an extensive amount of gathering. You can't really fit this in just by stretching the uh, small side like I did when working on that metallic uh, dress earlier in the week. Hopefully you saw that video and know what I'm talking about. If not, I will link you to it in a card here. But I'm coming down the neckline here and all along the shoulder because the neck like the tube of the neck and the shoulder are all one right now because it's all just, again, an all-in-one collar, as it were. Um, but just gathering is on the underside facing the feed dogs here and just sewing that down. Again, I am using my stretchy stitch for this, but I probably could have gotten away with using straight stitch here. 
I bet you it would be fine. I didn't actually study the stitches on that Amazon garment very closely. I could have, um, but I was more concerned with the shape of the pattern and less with how they were sewing it together. But while I'm here, I will go ahead and sew the other, like the smooth shoulder here. Again, trying to remember to remove my pins while working with this machine because she and I don't get along very well. So now I have this little neckline here. I'm going to fold it down on itself, uh, the whole thing. Just fold this down and throw in a little bit of stitching along the sides. So I've literally just folded that neckline down in half, like so. And I will stitch the sides to tack that in place. And you're thinking, what? Now you can't even get your head in there. No, you can, because you just fold this back like that, and now it's finished. So that's how they did the neckline on the other, like the commercial top. So uh, I assume it will be fine for this, honestly. And I'm just going to remove my gathering stitching here now. Instead of grabbing a seam ripper, I'm just using these embroidery scissors that I keep over here and being careful and removing those gathering stitches now that I don't need them anymore and everything is sewn into place. Again, give that a little bit of steam so it lays nicely. And then I still have my side seams aren't sewn at all, so I can go ahead and set my sleeves in flat again. So I will do this before I gather down and do the um, large gathered side seam because it's just easier with these knit garments I have found to set my sleeves in flat. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Again, finding the center of my sleeve, matching that up with the shoulder. I, again, press all my seam allowance. When I can't press it open, I always press it towards the back. So staying consistent with that for this as well. And I just love the color of this fabric. There's something about this berry that is so pretty. Sometimes, like there's some colors that I find are harder to find, which like berry and teal fabrics can sometimes be harder to find for some reason. Like for example, especially in wools, I would love a wool suiting in this color to make a pencil skirt out of, but I've never seen a wool suiting in this color. I, I sometimes I'll see like nice colors of wool suiting, but it's like fancy, fancy gabardine and $80 a yard. No, no, no I, I, a max of like $24 a yard, please. You know, I only need one yard to make a pencil skirt, but even I don't want to pay $80 for a pencil skirt. And the same, I feel the same about dark teal. I actually tried to order a forest green Pendleton vintage pencil skirt on Etsy for like $20. And when it arrived, it was not forest green, it was navy blue. And I'm still confused on what happened there because they listed it as a green skirt. So I, I think we both got fooled there somehow. So that didn't work out for me. So I still need a forced green pencil skirt as well. So if I could just find, and it, like, it hurts me to buy a pencil skirt because we all know I make dozens of pencil skirts a year. If I could just find dark green wool suiting fabric, like a dark foresty green color in like a heavier weight suiting fabric, can't find it. I had one once and for some reason I sold that skirt and what a mistake, you know? What was I thinking? Why would I ever get rid of a green skirt? Green is my favorite color. Did I expect that to change? Past me does not know what's going on, obviously. But here I am, sewing my sleeve in, same as I've been doing uh, for the last week or so here, with all these stretchy projects. Like so. And then again, I can sew the side seam and the underarm seam of the sleeve at the same time, even though this side seam has all this gathering in it. So I will, again, tie off my gathering threads, pull everything down so that all of this gathers down to eight inches, like the other side does. And that way I can, you know, match the back up to it and everything will fit down into itself. Again, this is not particularly difficult. It is just uh, a fun look without a lot of effort, honestly. And especially in this lighter weight jersey, as floopy and slightly annoying as it is to sew with, um, you can fit a lot of gathering in here. So honestly, I could have gathered, put even more fullness into this if I wanted to, had like more ruching or more gathering on the front of this garment. I could have probably fit more in here because this gathered down wonderfully, as it were. Of course, the thicker the fabric, the more annoying it almost is to gather down a bunch of it because things get thick really quickly. So I've just pulled all that down to fit like so, and I will line up the back with that. And then I can sew all along the side seam and all along the sleeve at the same time in one go. Um, this took me a little bit longer than some of the other things only because this fabric was floopy, not because it was particularly difficult, uh, like structurally. But after all of this, working on all the stretch stuff recently, I am very ready to get back to Wovens. I actually made one of the high slit pencil skirts that I wore in Synapse, I made another one for, for my Patreon exclusive video this month, and it was so nice to be working with a woven fabric and back on the 99K. I had missed it, uh, even only a few weeks away, and I really missed my, my other machine and actually just sewing with fabric that I feel a lot more comfortable with, I should say. But yes, back here on the B35. Sorry, buddy. Uh, she is in the room while I talk about her like this. <clears throat> Sorry, it's no wonder we don't get along. Um, but I am trying to remove those pens again as I go. Uh, I think I could probably get away with sewing over these ones. I actually just grabbed a new box of pins to try. So I'm going to be trying my Japanese silk pins instead of these buddies from Dritz because 
While I've been loyal to these blue glass-headed pens for a long time, every time I open a new box, it's like they're getting less and less sharp straight from the manufacturer, and it's just disappointing. For someone who does a lot of sewing, to have my pins be not sharp is, like when they're brand new, it's kind of unacceptable. So I'm trying different sources of pins. Maybe I'll do a future pin review. That could be a good short. I'll make my first short ever. I, I can't make short form content. It's just not, not how my brain works. I don't know if I'm just, I'm an elder millennial, I guess, or at least I'm a millennial who feels like an elder and I can't tic-tac and I cannot short for the life of me or real or any other things. It's like I have enough video content to make without having to make short versions, I guess. When have I ever been concise in life? You know, I can't even be concise while talking about how I can't be concise. Anyway, the other side seam, no gathering to be done. It's all the same size, so I can just pin this and sew the other side seam and underarm seam of the sleeve all in one go, same way, just without any gathering on this side because we're working with asymmetry, of course. But I do look forward to using those new pins and doing a couple more wovens projects for a video I have coming up here soon. I have a couple of lookbooky things on the horizon that I'm excited to show you. But back over here on the machine, I can again sew that underarm slash slide seam all in one there. And then all I have left to do on this top is to hem the sleeves and the bottom hem of the top itself because the neckline again was finished with that sort of fold back turtleneck situation up there. It's got like a self-facing is what's going on with this mock neck. And then I just have to hem these sleeves here and then hem the bottom of the top itself. And this top will be finished and ready to try on so I can show it to you. I did not end up making a dress version of this one today, but this, just like the other two stretch videos I've done recently, you could just tape the skirt on and match it up at the waist with this to make a dress version of this. You could add more gathering to that or not if you wanted to as well. Um, if you wanted to have extra gathering up along the hip to be along the waist and stuff like that, you could. But this is the top version for you all. I do want to make a dress version in the future or perhaps just use this pattern again. I do think I'll take it in along the sides just a little bit more. Um, this one is extra floopy in the sides just because this fabric is extra stretchy, but I think in the future I'll take it in just a tiny bit extra. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this design that isn't really mine, as we know, came together today. I do plan to use this pattern quite a lot. I have a few other fabrics stashed away here in my stash that I plan to use this pattern with, especially because I just want metallic versions of this. And luckily metallic jerseys are pretty easy to find. And of course, thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>